Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal burnout recovery expert and today I wanted to talk to you about adrenal gland disorders and more specifically how we assess a, an adrenal gland disorder in our office a little bit differently and how you should go about having your adrenal gland disorder assessed as well. So first of all we have a new patient application and it's very very extensive because you need to get into the past history, the environmental history, the dietary history, the family history, childhood history, and, and review of systems because all of these things have important clues as to what's going on with your adrenal gland problem. This particular patient, she's a 38-year-old single mom of a 7-year-old child. She gave me permission to talk to you about her condition today, although we're not going to reveal any names. But I, this is a real live case and I want to get to um, the meat and potatoes because I think it's really important for you to gain some insight on, on what's going on with this patient and exactly how this may be relating to you. 38-year-old single mom, uh, is gaining weight, she's about 190 pounds, wants to weigh about 130 pounds, so she, no matter what she does, she exercises, she eats healthy, and for the most part, she is unable to lose the weight whatsoever. She's gone through a divorce, so has a very uh, stressful life, um, is unemployed and is looking for a new job, a new career. So all of those stressful factors are 100% are related to her symptoms. And it tells the doctor that this person has a very, very stressful um, history and that this is potentially what's causing or at least a, uh, leading to or uh, a result of her problems. She also has no energy. She can't focus. She just wants to feel better. She can't do the things she'd like to do physically. Um, going places with her seven-year-old son. And she has a history of thyroid problems in her family. So one of the important things I wanted you to realize is that on her blood tests, they basically came back normal. She doesn't have any problems whatsoever. The doctors told her that there was nothing wrong. And so when you have someone look at your blood test, you need to have a little bit of a more scrutinizing eye to understand what are the certain things that are jumping off the, t the charts that aren't necessarily higher or low on a lab test. And there's a couple that really show their way in her case. Number one, her cholesterol levels were 197. And that's fine. It should be below 199, so it looks great. But her triglycerides was 199. And so that's a problem right there. When cholesterol levels are lower than your triglyceride levels, then that tells us one thing right away, that she is insulin resistant. And what does that mean? Sorry for my messy handwriting. That basically means that she is unable to get sugar from the bloodstream into the cells. It's like an annoying boss or a nagging spouse yelling at you all day and you just tune them out. Insulin levels go high because blood sugar levels go high or low. We're going to get into that in a second. And ultimately, the insulin levels are too high and the cells become resistant to them and so they no longer do an effective job of opening up the doors for getting sugar out of the bloodstream and into the cells and then a person will crash and it will cause triglyceride levels to go elevated. So that's one huge thing that she has going on right now. So let's give a little bit more support to that. Number two, her glucose, her fasting glucose levels was 80. So that would look normal, right? Because she's a normal range for glucose is 65 to 99. So how could this person be insulin resistant and have a fasting glucose level of 80? Well, the answer to that is from a functional range, she shouldn't be below 85 and she's at 80. And so that tells me right away that she's doing a bad job of stabilizing her blood sugar throughout the day. She's missing meals. She may not be having a, um, a healthy representation of a protein, carbohydrate, and fat. She's waiting too long between her meals. And ultimately, too low blood sugar leads to the same road as too high blood sugar in that it will lead to insulin resistance. Your body's very intelligent and as a last-ditch effort to try to get sugar out of the bloodstream into the Cells, even if there is no sugar into the bloodstream, then the insulin, if you know, defensively says, let's wrench out whatever little sugar there is left and get them into the cells. 
ultimately causing circulating insulin to be too high, resulting in insulin resistance and causing those tri triglyceride levels to go too high. As a result, when we have a draining of the adrenal glands because of the, the job of having a stabilized blood sugar over time, then now it becomes not only the cause, it becomes the effect. Number three, her neutrophil levels was 70%. Neutrophils are basically a white blood cell. They're the first responder. They show up to the scene when there is a problem with um, an, an, an outbreak of, of uh, an infection. And so um, on, the, on the ranges for the labs, it doesn't even show anything. It just shows percent. It doesn't even tell the person what the percentage ranges are. And so it should optimally be um, 40 to 60 percent. And she's at 70 percent which tells me there's a good likelihood that she has a bacteria infection. Um, that could be an H. pylori infection, it could be another bacteria infection, but suffice to say, that's creating inflammation in her gut. When that creates inflammation in her gut, then she doesn't secrete as much uh, gastric juices, stomach acid, um, enzymes to effectively break down the, the food that she's eating. She's not absorbing it well. That will lead to intestinal permeability. That will lead to food sensitivities. That will lead to uh, autoimmunities, cross reactions against her thyroid or her, her gut. And, um, and that will also drain the adrenal glands because now the adrenal glands have to balance the inflammation from the infection. She also had her lymphocytes were 20%. And again, the lab on the lab range didn't say any percent, and we know she should be between 25 to 40%. So we know just based on those results alone, she has some kind of gastrointestinal dysfunction and we need to do a repair, we need to do a cleanse, we need to do reducing inflammation, we need to stabilize her blood sugar, we need to affect her diet, we need to identify foods that she may be reacting to. All of those things, notice how I didn't say anything about get her on adaptogens or get her on um, DHEA or get her on holy basil. I'm talking about address these core problems. The other thing that we found also was thyroid problems. Her TSH was 1.79. From a lab range it's 0.35 to 4.0 or 4.5. From a healthy range she's at 1.8 to 3.0. So she is kind of in that range but there was no other test done so we don't know if if T4, T3, total T4, total T3, and most importantly, thyroid antibodies. So her question to me was, what will happen if I don't do anything about this? And what I'll tell her is, you're already having cognitive problems, you're not focusing, you don't have energy, you have some vestibular problems, you have some dizziness when you stand up too quickly, you can't do the things that you wanna do with your son, and you're told that you're normal. What's gonna happen is insulin resistance is gonna to continue to develop, potentially it could lead to diabetes, diabetes, but more important than that, it could lead to future autoimmunities, meaning your immune system is being beat up so badly by all these core problems that are going on with your body, and, and just because you have one autoimmunity, which we don't even know yet, um, doesn't mean you can't have several autoimmunities, so that could result in celiac disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, IBS and Crohn's, it could lead to rheumatoid arthritis, it could lead to fibromyalgia, it could lead to psoriatic arthritis, it could lead to um, gout, it could lead to um, ALS, neurological problems, Parkinson's, um, uh, multiple sclerosis, it could lead to um, lupus. There's so many things that it could lead to and, and we're told at this early phase in the game that there's nothing wrong with you. And there is something wrong. Your body is not processing sugar optimally, you're waiting too long between meals, your gut is, is, is in disarray, and, and there's a whole lot of things that we can do to fix it. So that's an adrenal gland disorder problem. I hope that made a lot of sense to you. So anyways, um, this was another edition of Your Adrenal Fix. If you liked what you heard today, then please give me a thumbs up, a share, or a comment. Be sure to check out my blog at Adrenal Fatigue Society, and I look forward to helping you in your adrenal nightmare. Thank you so much.